The world is on the brink of destruction, as typhoons, tsunamis, and earthquakes threaten to annihilate civilization. The only hope for survival lies in securing a place on the arcs, but only the wealthiest can afford the exorbitant tickets. In 2009, a series of powerful solar flares erupts. To investigate, American scientist Dr. Helmsley travels to India to meet his friend, astrophysicist Satnam Surutani. Together, they descend into a copper mine over three kilometers deep, where Satnam reveals alarming data. The solar flares are heating the Earth's core, causing groundwater to boil. This will inevitably trigger a global catastrophe. Urgently, Helmsley returns to America to inform Carl Anheuser, the head of the presidential administration. Initially dismissed, Helmsley's concerns gain weight after Anheuser reads the report. They rush to alert the U.S. President, Thomas Wilson. A year later, at the G8 summit, the president shares the secret of the impending apocalypse with world leaders. Construction of massive arc ships begins in the Tibetan Valley, where the chosen will be sheltered from the disaster. To make room for the construction, locals are relocated under the guise of a dam project, with only construction workers allowed to stay. By 2011, the truth is still hidden from the public, while billionaires discreetly buy ARC tickets, each priced at 1 million euros. By 2012, the day before the catastrophe, Jackson Curtis, a science fiction writer in Los Angeles, remains oblivious to the looming disaster. He hurriedly heads to his ex-wife's house to pick up the kids for a weekend trip to Yellowstone Park. Meanwhile, a minor earthquake shakes the city, leaving a crack in the pavement, but people continue to react with humor and indifference. Jackson, absorbed in his writing, rarely spends time with his children, who are growing closer to their mother's new boyfriend, Gordon, a plastic surgeon. Jackson sees the Yellowstone trip as an opportunity to reconnect with his kids. That same morning, Dr. Helmsley and Anheuser meet with the president to discuss the worsening geological conditions in California. Helmsley is alarmed that the Earth's core is heating up faster than his initial projections, suggesting that the evacuation may need to start sooner than expected. To gather more data, Helmsley, along with a military team and researchers, heads to Yellowstone, the epicenter of heightened seismic activity. At the park, Jackson and his children stumble upon a mysteriously dried up lake. The military quickly intercepts them and escorts them to a nearby base for their safety. There, Dr. Helmsley meets Jackson and his kids, assuring them that this is just a routine geological survey and there's nothing to worry about. During their conversation, Helmsley recognizes Jackson as a science fiction writer and praises his work. Afterward, Jackson and his children return to the tent camp as if nothing unusual happened, while Helmsley contacts Satnam, the Indian astrophysicist. Satnam's findings reveal that the Earth's crust is destabilizing globally, meaning the evacuation to the arcs must begin immediately. Helmsley promises that a plane will be sent for Satnam and his family soon. Meanwhile, Jackson struggles to bond with his kids, who are bored in the tent camp. As they settle in for the night, Jackson notices a conspiracy theorist and radio host named Charlie, broadcasting from his van, talking about the impending apocalypse. Charlie shares his belief that the government is hiding the truth from the public, ensuring that only a select few will survive. He even shows Jackson a map with the location of the arcs. Jackson dismisses Charlie's wild claims and returns to his tent. The next day, however, the tremors grow more intense, and Jackson's ex-wife, Kate, urgently calls, asking him to bring the kids home. Meanwhile, Anheuser informs the U.S. president that only four arcs have been built so far, meaning they won't be able to save nearly enough people. Helmsley delivers a grim report to world leaders, prompting the U.S. president to order an immediate evacuation to the ships. Jackson returns the kids to Kate and rushes off to his job as a driver for Russian oligarch Yuri Karpov. Karpov, who has secured ARC tickets, receives an evacuation alert and orders Jackson to pick up his twin sons and bring them to the airport. During the drive, one of the boys accidentally reveals that they plan to survive the catastrophe on massive ships. Jackson suddenly recalls Charlie's warnings and realizes the end of the world is indeed approaching. Acting quickly, he rents a plane and races to gather his family. At first, Kate is skeptical, but when another powerful earthquake strikes, she, Gordon, and the children hastily pile into Jackson's car. As they speed through Los Angeles, the city crumbles around them, buildings collapse, and entire neighborhoods sink into the ground. They narrowly make it to the airport only to discover that the plane's pilot is dead. Fortunately, Gordon has recently taken flying lessons and is able to take the controls. Together, they manage to take off just as the city is obliterated beneath them. It's clear that Los Angeles, along with other coastal cities, is being swallowed by the ocean.
Jackson insists they must head to Yellowstone to retrieve Charlie's map, which shows the location of the arcs. They land the plane at Yellowstone to refuel, and while there, Jackson hurries off to find Charlie, with his young daughter trailing behind him. Charlie is no longer in his van, having already made his way to the mountain to await the end of the world. Jackson tracks him down, frantically asking for the map, and then rushing back to the plane. Charlie, however, refuses to leave, continuing his broadcast with a massive erupting volcano in the background. Yellowstone is now a scene of total chaos, and as Jackson speeds toward the plane, Gordon prepares for takeoff since staying any longer is impossible. At the last moment, Jackson finds the map, leaps out of the van, and barely manages to jump onto the plane as it takes off. Gordon skillfully navigates the plane away from the colossal explosions. Once in the air, Jackson examines the map and realizes that the arcs are in China, meaning they'll need a larger plane to make the journey. Meanwhile, Helmsley secretly contacts his father, warning him about the impending disaster, even though it's against the rules. His father remains calm and bravely tells Helmsley not to worry, offering a heartfelt farewell. Anheuser, on the other hand, keeps the truth from his own mother, assuming she would refuse to evacuate. As devastation spreads globally, thousands of grief-stricken people gather in prayer, filled with despair. Helmsley struggles with the decision to continue keeping the truth from the public, but Anheuser adamantly opposes revealing anything until the chosen few are safely aboard the Arks. Anheuser pushes for the immediate evacuation of the president, but President Wilson retreats to a chapel, refusing to speak with anyone but Helmsley. In a private conversation, Wilson confides in Helmsley that he feels he hasn't done enough to save humanity and decides to stay behind, sharing the fate of his people. Helmsley reluctantly boards the plane, reporting that the president has refused to evacuate. Anheuser then takes control, leading to a tense confrontation between the two men. Helmsley is dismayed by Anheuser's cold, authoritarian approach, while Anheuser believes that sentimentality will hinder the mission to save humanity. The president's daughter, Laura Wilson, also boards the plane, tearfully saying goodbye to her father and accepting his decision to stay. President Wilson addresses the nation, and contrary to Anheuser's fears, his speech does not incite riots. Meanwhile, Gordon successfully pilots the plane to Las Vegas, but all flights have been canceled, leaving them unsure how to get to China. At the airport, the Karpov family, including Yuri, is also waiting for their departure. Knowing that Karpov has ARC tickets, Jackson pleads with his former employer to take his family along. At that moment, Sasha, Karpov's personal pilot, announces that he's found a functional plane, but they are missing a co-pilot. Jackson suggests that Gordon take on the role. The group rushes toward the massive AN-500 aircraft, which is carrying vehicles. Despite the air traffic controller's orders to stop and a damaged runway, Sasha and Gordon successfully get the plane off the ground. Meanwhile, a Buddhist monk named Nima receives a letter from his brother, who works at the Ark construction site. In the letter, his brother reveals the truth about the project, explaining that he has found a way to sneak onto the Arks without tickets. He urges Nima to bring the entire family to the base. Nima informs his teacher and sets off to collect his grandparents. At the White House, now blanketed in ash, people take shelter while maintaining their dignity and assisting one another. President Wilson makes it his mission to help a little girl reunite with her father. Similarly, the Prime Minister of Italy chooses to stay behind, spending his remaining time in prayer. However, disaster soon strikes as a massive earthquake hits the Vatican, burying millions. The continents are rapidly shifting, causing enormous tsunamis across the globe. One such wave engulfs Washington, claiming countless lives, including President Wilson. Dr. Helmsley reports that the Ark base will be submerged in six hours and notes that the Earth's crust has shifted drastically, so much so that the South Pole is now in Wisconsin. Aboard the AN-500, Jackson and Kate share a heartfelt conversation, forgiving each other for past grievances. Sasha warns that the plane is running low on fuel, meaning an emergency landing is imminent. Due to the shifting continents, the plane unexpectedly ends up near the Himalayas, close to their intended destination. The engines fail, and landing in the rugged Tibetan mountains seems impossible. Sasha instructs everyone to get into one of the cars and exit through the rear cargo door of the low-flying plane. One by one, everyone safely departs the aircraft, except for Sasha, who bravely stays behind to pilot the plane. The AN-500 teeters on the edge of a cliff before plunging into the abyss, and Sasha tragically dies. Soon after, Chinese cargo helicopters transporting animals to the arcs appear overhead. 
One of the pilots spots the group and lands. Karpov presents the Chinese pilots with boarding passes for himself and his sons, securing their place on board, while the rest of the group is left behind to face the freezing conditions of the mountains. The group wanders through the mountains and spots a car in the distance. Jackson waves desperately, pleading for it to stop. The driver turns out to be the Buddhist monk Nima, who offers them a ride, and they all head toward the valley together. Meanwhile, Anheuser, now at the Ark base, is informed that one of the four Arks is malfunctioning, the same one for which Karpov had tickets. Helmsley and Laura Wilson, having grown closer, approach Anheuser to ask how people were chosen to board the Arks. It is then that Anheuser reveals the truth. Tickets were sold only to the wealthy, with no attempt made to select the best candidates for rebuilding civilization. Helmsley realizes his cabin could fit ten people, not just himself. At that moment, the astrophysicist Satnam calls Helmsley, revealing that no plane came for his family. Satnam shares news of another massive tsunami, says his final farewell, and perishes. Helmsley, alarmed, rushes to input the latest data, reporting that the wave will hit the arcs in just half an hour. Meanwhile, Nima's car arrives at the arc gates. His brother, Tianjin, refuses to let anyone other than his family in. Kate pleads with Nima's grandmother to at least take the children. The grandmother, after giving Tianjin a stern look, insists on taking everyone. Tianjin reluctantly agrees. Back at the base, those with tickets for the broken Ark realize they have been left behind. Led by Karpov, the panicked crowd storms toward the nearest functional Ark, the same one Helmsley is aboard. However, Anheuser has already ordered the gates to be closed. Tianjin quietly guides Jackson's group through a hidden path into the Ark. Along the way, they spot Karpov and his children, unable to board. A chaotic scene unfolds at the landing platform as people struggle to hold on, with many falling into the abyss. Helmsley, unable to ignore the suffering, addresses the leaders of the world, urging them to reopen the gates so those left on the platform can enter the Ark. Anheuser interrupts, pointing out that only 15 minutes remain before the wave strikes, and arguing that the safety of those already inside must be prioritized. However, Helmsley persuades the leaders that a future built on cruelty is unacceptable. In the end, they agree to open the gates, but this decision endangers Jackson's. The movement of the gate's lifting mechanism flings Tianjin and Gordon onto massive rotating gears. Tianjin suffers a serious leg injury, but Jackson manages to save him. Unfortunately, Gordon loses his grip and, unable to hold on to Jackson, is pulled into the gears and crushed. A thick cable also gets caught in the mechanism, causing the gate to jam and remain partially open. Despite this, people rush inside the Ark. There are only four minutes left before the wave hits. Everyone except Karpov and his sons is inside. In a final desperate move, Karpov manages to throw his sons through the closing gate, but he himself falls into the abyss beneath the ship. The jammed cable prevents the gate from closing completely. Helmsley spots Jackson's children in the compartment near the lifting mechanism, recognizes them, and assures Anheuser that he can fix the situation. He races with workers toward Jackson's compartment, but only one minute remains before the wave strikes, and the gates are still half open. As the massive wave approaches, it destroys everything in its path and begins to flood the ship, triggering the security system, which locks down some compartments, including the one where Jackson's group is located. With the gates still open, the Ark can't start its engines, causing it to drift uncontrollably in the enormous waves. The ship is now on a collision course with Everest, and without the engine running, the impact could be catastrophic. Helmsley, unable to reach Jackson, communicates with him through the compartment intercom, explaining how to unlock the mechanism and stressing the urgency. Jackson realizes that entering the flooded compartment is a suicide mission, but he goes for it anyway. His son quietly follows him, and Jackson asks him to light the way with a flashlight while he works on freeing the cable. With his son's help, Jackson successfully removes the cable, allowing the gates to close and the engine to finally start. However, the Ark is hurtling toward the mountain at high speed, and few believe the engine will be able to steer it away in time. Massive boulders tumble down the mountain, threatening to crush the ship. But at the last second, the Ark reverses and narrowly avoids the collision. Jackson emerges from the lift bay to a hero's welcome, reuniting with his family. On the 27th day after the flood, the waters begin to recede, and satellites send back images of Earth's new surface. The mountains of southern Africa now stand as the highest point on the planet. The Ark sails toward this new pinnacle of the world, and as the gates open, survivors step onto the deck to witness the dawn of a new era group, 
who are still navigating the intersections of the ship. Thank you for watching the video. If you like the video, please comment, like, share, and subscribe.